So y'all remember in like previous Yu-Gi-Oh's when if you brought like two characters who never really interacted and suddenly gave them interactions, it would be fun because you just wonder what happens when those two are in the same room together or in the same duel together. And remember how other Yu-Gi-Oh's have like really weird, random, nonsensical stuff happening, but they do it in a way that's fun and interesting so you're engaged? Yeah, this is not that. Hello, everybody. We are here to talk about episodes 69, shut up phone, 70, and 71 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. When we last left this franchise like three weeks ago, uh, nothing was really happening, or at least nothing particularly interesting, save for the idea that Udius now is a little has a little girl he looks after that was about it and coming out after these three episodes yes that is still about the only interesting thing going on here except we didn't do anything with this until the last like two fucking minutes of this most recent episode and the only reason i'm really making this video is because i'd rather take now to talk about why a lot of this crap really isn't working because I kind of would like to believe if you start focusing on the Epoch stuff and what happened at the end there, there might be something worth talking about and I'd rather just get this out of the way. Also, like it is probably better to just touch base with the show every few weeks since, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of what I do. But yeah, we're almost two minutes in. We haven't really talked about anything. I mean, there's nothing to really talk about. Let's see how far we can push this. So episode 69. Hey, we made it to 69, boys! Shouldn't we all be happy? I know I am. Wait, we're 69 episodes in and barely anything good has happened. Fuck me. So yeah, for episode 69, it's Phaser's brother, whose name I can't bother to remember, versus the weird tiny ladybug kid. And the setup for this episode is they're not getting anywhere with the big rock. So the guy thinks that um, it's the ladybug. No, it's a fuck. This is hard. There's just nothing to care about. He thinks Zuijo is somehow involved with the rock, which leads to the ladybug guy getting suspicious. Or girl? Did they confirm girl? I don't fucking care. Uh, so yeah, basically those two have a really forced contrived setup for a duel. And the thing is, like, you could do something kind of interesting with this. Like, maybe make it that the reason he doesn't trust Zuijo is because maybe a little bit of the bigotry is still pushing through. And the Ladybug character, instead of, like, really, like, wanting to figure out a way to work with this, because she's a soldier, it's just kind of like, well, we got to fight it out could do that or you could go the other way around maybe make it that the Velgarians aren't like really assimilating into society and so the more soldier ones end up still wanting to like be pushed towards aggression or violence and that's what leads to them having to duel but like just making it that it's just this big overly drawn out misunderstanding also prison I brought up before what the fuck happened to the plot line that Udius wants to bring his like 8.88 million countrymen to our world and integrate them into society. Remember that? Remember how that was the fucking point of the show? And just like, they just live in the saucer, I guess, and don't do anything? Oh, wait. They just went back to their home planet, the ones who didn't come back with them. Which, okay, so then what's the fucking point anymore? So yeah, that rant over. Uh, but yeah, they have their duel and it's just like, there's nothing to it. This guy's entire personality is he's Phaser's loyal younger brother. And that was kind of interesting while well, Phaser was the bad guy, but now Phaser doesn't do anything. So this guy has no identity and no purpose besides he's got those three women simping over him who it was weird because they were kind of in the background for like multiple episodes, but I forget, did they even have a formal introduction? They were just there. But yeah, so they have a duel and Ladybug Kit Girl is just... What do I fucking... I don't want to remember the name. I don't care. I don't fucking care. Basically, Ladybug Duelist is just like, oh, Zuija's fine. And they have the duel and then Ladybug wins. And then it ends with the arrival of Zion, if I'm correct, is the nail ancestor's name. And it's, it's bad. 
it's 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 not good it's not interesting it's not compelling so the whole gimmick of this guy and it is a gimmick is that he can turn anyone he touches into furniture what are the rules of this how are they still alive Normally in Yu-Gi-Oh terms, I wouldn't fucking care. The reason I care is because there's nothing to fucking care about with this whole thing. No one is mad to be turned into furniture. No one is really bothered by it. They treat it like a minor inconvenience. You could get some really like funny horror type stuff from this. Like you can make it that there's stuff like, oh my God, how do I scratch my nose? Oh my God, how do I take a piss? How do I do this? How do I do that? No, they just stand there and they're just fine with being turned into furniture. No one's reacting to anything. Between this and Vanguard, what is the obsession with bad shows revolving around no one doing anything or reacting to anything? But yeah, so they get turned into furniture and like, Zion is all just like, I will get revenge for the downfall of my space furniture store by killing Epoch or who fucking gives a shit. Like, who cares? Who really cares? The show barely cares. They don't do anything with any of this. If you want to make this big, ridiculous plot, you can do that. Go for it. But they don't do anything with it. All the humor just comes from the fact he's an alien furniture store owner. You get no details about his life. You get no idea how space furniture works. It's just a normal furniture store. Just he sometimes says he's an alien. And that's it. Like, what is there? If you didn't know this was Yu-Gi-Oh! If you, hell, if you didn't know this was aliens, would you think it was anything? No! This is a franchise that makes it that revealing a trap card can blow up the world. You can go fucking silly, but you have to make it interesting. There's just nothing to this. So then him and Udius are dueling, and where this duel goes is that Udius now has... Guys, guys, you'll, you'll never guess what the evil cards are are called in this show. It's it's so creative. It's so interesting. It's so unique. You know what they're called? They're called darkness cards. Oh my God, isn't that so exciting? I sure hope we didn't do this back in fucking GX. And every one of these shows at some point has some variant of this, but do it way more fucking interesting. So... Udius draws his card of darkness, which is supposed to usually be a huge fucking deal. The hero is using the powers of evil, except you haven't established what the powers of evil can do. So first, Yuamu had a card of darkness that gave her a new red eyes fusion. I know it's not red eyes, but it's red eyes. And after 10 minutes of being possessed, she's fine. Just like Vanguard, no after effects, no anything. They don't want you thinking about this besides the fact that it's a thing that exists in the world. So that happened. And then like this guy ate a gear which gave him furniture. What the fuck? I don't even want to think about it. That's how little shit I give. Uh, yeah, so then Udius draws it and it's like, oh shit, here comes the power of darkness. But he's like, no. I will not be consumed by the power of darkness. So the power of darkness in this show is just a non-entity. It's just a thing that's there that won't matter at all. And then we get a new Galactica Oblivion evolution, which feels a lot like Utopia Ray V in terms of role. And by that, I mean, it'll get used twice and then he'll get a new thing. Um, and it wins the duel. I mean, it's a cool card. It's just like, okay. And he gets... A monster that can fuse. I mean, again, like, I play regular Yu-Gi-Oh! It's not that exciting, and you didn't do anything with it. And then the episode ends with the one interesting thing, and that is the minute Epoch saw that Udius, uh, just what the power of darkness, like, did to him for, like, those five seconds, we get an interesting subversion here, and that's maybe it doesn't bother Udius, but it bothers Epoch. And the idea that it took this stubborn, angry child who loves reminding everyone how stubborn she is and scared her that bad and sent her spiraling right back into her own fear and anxiety and going back into that box. I mean, she never left the box, but the point was you were seeing more of her face until that moment. That's good. That's interesting. Do that. Don't do whatever the fuck I just sat through was because this is not interesting. 
This is the least interesting Yu-Gi-Oh has ever been. And it sucks. But what did you think? In the comment section below, give me your thoughts on these episodes. Are you even interested in the Epoch thing? Because I can totally see people just not caring. But I care enough to keep going. So yeah, that was these three episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. And for this week's TCG question of the week or quarter, I don't know what to call this at this point because that's how little I want to talk about this show. Um, Let's do a fun one. Well, I know we do. We try to keep it relevant to what's going on in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, but let's just do a fun one. This episode made me think of this. So, does contact fusion count as contact fusion if it's via the effect of an effect monster? What I mean by that is we typically define contact fusion as meaning that the card specific materials have to be met, have to be met as in like, say with Neos, it's shuffled back into the deck or Dragon Buster to banish them, things like that, because those are the specific wordings on the fusion monster for the materials. However, oftentimes when I see people use monsters with fusion effects, like say uh, this thing or Odd Eyes Dissolver or Perform Bow Trump Girl, I use Pendulum, so I mostly think of those examples. Do you count that as contact fusion? I never do, but I've had multiple people tell me it counts. So in the comment section below, give me your thoughts on that. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me in the future to see if the girl will ever leave the box.